Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I am, as promised, gonna do the palette cleanse. That is the wonderful engagement video of William and Catherine. I'm gonna be looking at this video and I'm gonna be looking at their body language, how they're coming across, and I'm gonna compare and contrast that, obviously a little bit in comparison to um, Harry and Meghan's engagement video. And then I'm gonna give my thoughts at the end. And as always, I invite you to drop your comments in the comment box. Let me know what you think. If there's anything I've missed, let me know. So if you don't know what to do by now, grab your drink of choice and drop it in the comments as well, what you are sitting back relaxing and drinking today, or maybe you are eating something, who knows? Or you might wanna add a little something, something to that drink of choice, because as I always say, and the flag says behind me, it is five o'clock somewhere. So grab your drink and let's dive right in. So obviously, as always, I will be editing this video. Um, I'm still trying to work out the best way to do the screen sharing. So I'm sure there is a better way of doing this and I will work on that, uh, especially for the upcoming videos that I will be doing. But for this one, I'm doing it in a similar type of way as I did it before. Um, so hopefully that works. So from the offset, I just wanna say just how cute these two are. And I'm so biased, probably really trying to not be biased, but I am really biased, I think. Um, they just, I wanna say that Catherine actually doesn't look like she's aged at all. Um, I, will, I will say that, she, to me, she looks the same. Um, she has just got the most beautiful, I, I need to know what she does to have her hair this way because um, my hair, especially, I will say, since going through the menopause, has become like a straw. It is not glossy. It is not. Um, so if there's any hairdressers in the comments that can give me some advice on the best thing to put on my hair to stop it looking so dry and lacklustre, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, but just how young they look, because obviously this was quite some time ago now. So just from the offset, they, they're, just, they're just cute. They're just cute. So we'll be looking to the left just so people uh, understand that I am looking at the video uh, and I will be pausing it and then talking about things. Right, here we go. William and Kate, people are obviously incredibly curious about you. So let's start with the obvious. William, where did you propose? When, how, and Kate, what did you say? Uh, it was about uh, three weeks ago on holiday in Kenya. So straight away you can see that there's actually some anxiety um, with William, uh, which is, which, I mean, given the fact that obviously he's a lot younger, I don't find this as surprising as the way I sort of felt with, with, with Harry, um, because obviously Harry being that bit older, he's used to public speaking, he's used to sitting down on a one-to-one, -one, um, I'm okay, I appreciate that it's talking about an engagement, but I just felt that what he was showing wasn't, the way William is showing that because a lot of the time you go with clusters so if you look at William's face um he has what I call the Diana smile um he has got the same where he sort of looks down and looks up quite coyly and it's almost like a you know like a, almost a little, little boy cheekiness to that um and I think that that is so cute the fact that he does remind me of his mother and in so many ways, especially in his body language. Um, but I like the fact as well that, and what I've seen throughout this video, is that Catherine, even though she does answer, she doesn't dominate. Um, like in the way I felt that Megan tried to sort of dominate the conversation in their interview. Um, we had a little private time um, away together with some friends and I just decided that it was the right time really. Um, we've been talking about about um, marriage for a while so it wasn't a massively big surprise but uh, I took her up somewhere nice in, uh, in Kenya and, uh, and proposed. It's very romantic. There's a true romantic in that. This is the thing that struck me as well that they got they got engaged in Africa and then so did Harry and Meghan got engaged in Africa and I found that a little bit bizarre that they would get all oh, right it's not in the same place and I do appreciate that I, I did mess up when I said it was a, a three-hour drive I meant a three-hour plane ride 
but for some reason I just got the two completely confused and I ended up saying it was a three hour drive from where William and Catherine were to where Harry and Meghan were. Um, but still, it just seems a little bit odd. And on the fact that we now know that Meghan has a tendency to copy, mirror um, a lot of similar things to, um, to the way William and Catherine are. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's still very, they're very, he's very coy. And again, Catherine isn't really saying anything. So she's letting him respectfully take the lead in this. <laughs> and you said yes, obviously. Of course, yes. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and you knew you were going to do this from day one of the whole day or you, you waited I, till the end? I'd been planning it for a while. But... The one thing I do love about, there's probably going to be a lot of this. The one thing I do love about these two is they seem to have um, almost like a secret language the pair of them and you see this with couples that are very in tune with each other that you know in a sense the couples that are perfect together they're so aligned in their body language it's like even with their body language here they're kind of facing slightly facing each other inwards um which shows a sign of unity especially if they're both doing that um William is a little bit more sort of like I say he seems to be a little bit more protective his hands are in front of him but then so so is Catherine's but she's more relaxed and they're on her knee you can see they're on sort of on her lap so even though that is a sign of um almost like protecting yourself like this is slightly uncomfortable which is very understanding with regards to Catherine because she's not used to uh I think she doesn't particularly I would say back then like the sort of exposure she knows she's probably got to do it but she doesn't necessarily revel in it so yeah still just this very kind of cutesy the way they sort of look at each other it's very it's very, very sweet very sweet yes of course yeah so, uh, as every guy out there will know it's uh it takes a certain amount of motivation to get yourself going so i was planning it and then it just felt really right out in in africa it was beautiful at the time and i just i had done a little bit of planning to so that I would say is a very truthful statement. The way he, because he was, he very, he said that with, he enforced that I've been planning this a while. So that to me, the way he says that, that shows that there was some intent behind that, uh, that statement. So this is something that he has been doing. So he's obviously been building for this and he's been wanting to do this for a while, planning it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that's a true statement. To obviously share my romantic side. Okay, you'd been on holiday a while, so did you see this coming? Was he getting a bit no, nervous and jumpy? No, not at all, no, because, you know, we were out there with friends and things, so I really didn't expect it at all. I thought he might have sort of maybe thought about it, but... So again, you see, if you look at the, if you look at the body language, there's definitely a lot of the licking of the lips. It's like even with Catherine there, she she's kind of swallowing. There's, there's definitely some anxiety there with Catherine. Um, but again, you, you look at the fact that the difference between um, the way Catherine is, is is her whole body language. It's like, and also you have to look at someone's baseline. So when you look at somebody like Catherine, who's very demure, she's quite a submissive person, but she's a strong person. But I think there's something that's slightly out of her comfort zone. She's not particularly comfortable with it. And she's quite, she's a quiet sort of person anyway. So this in a sense matches the way she is when you have somebody that compares that then to Megan who is very um extrovert likes to be center of attention so when there's some anxiety with somebody like Megan then there's more possibly to do with slight deception possibly the fact that she's again out of her comfort zone but then we had the clenching of the jaw which was something we saw quite a lot with Megan and her rapid blinking um, so there is that difference. You know, it was a total shock when it came and very excited. <laughs> so I have a slight feeling that Catherine pro possibly did have a little bit of an inkling that something was going on. I do believe she probably didn't believe it was going to be an engagement, but I think that she possibly thought something was going on. William does look down um and to his left so there's something there as well um not sure what that is but there's there was something in that moment um but again i still feel that there 
that that anything that's sort of coming up for them is more of a just a normal human aspect of probably not wanting to give too much away so they're kind of probably keeping some things back um not not being deceptive intentionally if that makes sense you produce a ring yeah there and then I did, yeah. I'd been carrying it around with me in my rucksack for about three weeks before that. And uh, I literally would not let it go. Everywhere I went, I was keeping hold of it because I knew this thing, if it disappeared, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So again, I would say that's very truthful. He enforces that by almost like showing, like like he, he like he's saying, like, you know, I held on to this. Um, so I would absolutely say that that's true. Um, and yeah, because I planned it, it sort of, it went, fine as you know you'll hear a lot of horror stories about proposing and things go horribly wrong it went really really well and uh, yeah I was really pleased that she said yes and it he absolutely probably was absolutely capping himself in the fact that he's got this most expensive ring and obviously the fact that it's his 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 mother's um I I imagine you know and of course it is a big deal if you're going to propose to somebody because even if you think you know or you're pretty sure that person is going to say yes it's still that part of you that's like mm, but what if they don't so bless him I think he probably was um very worried it's a family ring it is a family ring yes it's my mother's engagement ring so I thought it was quite nice because um obviously she's not going to be around to share any of the um the fun and excitement of it all this is my way of keeping her sort of close to it all and I guess we better we better have a look at it what what kind of ring is it are you an expert on what I'm uh... not an expert on this one at all I've been reliably informed it's a sapphire with some diamonds but I'm sure everyone recognizes it from uh, from previous times so and isn't that such a beautiful ring with such sentiment as well and then look at the difference um again Catherine is sort of very humble she's very and it was interesting that that's not something they asked Harry and Meghan can we see the ring that surprised me a little bit actually I didn't I didn't mention that but it was something that I picked up on I was very surprised that they didn't say oh could we see the ring um because this is very it's just such a beautiful ring and it's obviously such a sentimental piece um and Obviously, we now know that this is the ring that Meghan believed that she was entitled to. Um, and then you then compare that to the way that Meghan almost look when she looks down at the ring um, with disappointment, um, almost like screwing up her face as if to say, oh, I can't really see it. Um, yeah, definitely a difference there. But just such a stunning, stunning piece with such a wonderfully um, sentimental sort of you know story behind it yeah, it's you're, probably, beautiful. you're going to be an envy of many I would well imagine. i just hope i look after it yeah. she loses it's, she's very, in big trouble. it's very very special <laughs> i mean again i like i i like the naturalness it's like that she's not catherine is just she's not um she's so humble even with this i mean she's you know this is a huge responsibility you know wearing this ring and you know, and, and her response is, I just hope that I, you know, I look after it. And, you know, she's just she's just so normal because I think a lot of us women, if we have um, our engagement ring, no matter what it is, one of our fears is losing it or damaging it in some way or something happening to it. Um, and, and it's just very her response is just very normal. And of course, then, you know, ha and they said Harry then. William jumping in and sort of going, well, you know, you better not, <laughs> she'll be in trouble. And I think it just shows they're just they're just a very normal couple. I think a lot of the time, even though these two, you know, they're royalty, but they they just come across so well suited, um, and just so in tune with each other that they that they they're very normal. Now, it has to be said, you both look incredibly happy and relaxed. We are, we are. We're, uh, we're like sort of ducks. It's sort of very calm on the surface, but the little, the little feet going under the water. Oh, look at her grin. Honestly, look at her grin. I mean, what else is there to say with this, these two? You can, you can just tell. Um, it's just such a warmth. It's, it's, uh, the contrast is astounding to me in the fact that, and, and I know that I, I talk about Harry and Meghan in the way that I talk about them because obviously that is the way I see them 
if if I didn't see that, then I wouldn't say what 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 I wouldn't say what I say, you know. So with these two, they they just exude that natural, warm. Like even though they're royalty, you could just sit down and have a laugh with them. Whereas I don't get that with Harry and Meghan. It seems very forced, very contrived. Um, like there's just something behind the eyes. It's like their mouth might be smiling, but there's just something behind the eyes. It's just there's just it's just not there. Whereas with these two, it's it's gig it's and even though obviously they are a lot younger, but it's just it's not over the top. It's just you can see that they love each other. Um, and they've been dating a very long time at this point. So, that, you know, I think they're very assured about their relationship and it shows. Awesome. But, uh, no, it's been... but uh, no, it's been really exciting. We've, we've been talking about it for a long time. So for us, it's kind of, it's a real relief and it's really nice to be able to tell everybody because especially the last two or three weeks have been quite difficult not telling anyone, keeping it to ourselves um, for, for reasons we had to. And uh, it's really nice to finally be able to share it with everyone. And you obviously have kept it a secret. So when did you, did you ask... Kate's dad and what did you say and have you, what did your respective parents say when you told them? Well I was, I was torn between asking Kate's dad first and then the realisation that he might actually say no dawned upon me so I thought if I ask Kate first then he can't really say no. So very clear. <laughs> I kind of like that because obviously traditional is you know ask the, the father of the bride um, first for the hand in marriage and then he was worried that he, she, that he would say no so he then asks Kate first so then that shows us actually so he was possibly a little bit more assured that Catherine was going to say yes um, and then asks his dad but again it just shows that he has that respect and again look at the contrast between Harry and William you know the fact that Harry didn't even think to speak to Thomas and say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of asking your daughter to, to marry me, you know, are you okay with that? You know, there wasn't even that. There was no respect for Meghan's father whatsoever. Now, whether that was down to, which I believe, whether that was down to the fact that Meghan has told him a story in regards to the family, but still, but still, um, he knew that she was still in contact with her father, but Harry didn't have that respect. So this is why I go along with the, the plan, the idea that those two didn't get together in a loving way. Their engagement, I feel, was orchestrated, sort of set up, um, whether it be due to the fact that, like I've said before, that Meghan potentially was dishonest um, and it went ahead they got, or it happened in Botswana, whichever it was. But anyway, but you could, again, you just see the, just the, the, the wonderful respect that William has. I mean, how could you, just the fact that you get two brothers that are so opposite, um, you know, it's, it's so obvious here. I mean, thank goodness William was born first. That's all I can say. So I, I did that way around and uh, managed to speak to, uh, to Mike um, um, sort of soon after it happened, really. Um, and then it sort of happened from there. Kate, what did your mum say? Well, I think as any, any mother would be, she was absolutely over the moon. And actually had quite an awkward situation because I knew, and I knew that William had asked my father, but I didn't know if my mother knew. So I came back from Scotland and um, you know, my, my mother made it sort of, didn't make it clear to me um, whether she knew or not. So both of us were there sort of looking at each other and feeling quite awkward about it. But um, it was amazing to tell her and obviously she was very happy for us. You're, you're, I mean, one of the things that's been clear actually for a long time is you very evidently have a, you know, a close, close knit family and family is very important to you. Yeah, no, it, it's very important to me and uh, you know, I, I hope we'll you know, be able to have a happy family ourselves because it's been, you know, they've been great over the years helping me with, you know, difficult, difficult times and, um, you know, we see a lot of each other um, and, you know, they're very, very dear to me. And again, I think that's, that's such the contrast. Um, you know, you can see just by the way that she speaks that how much her family mean to her the fact that we also know what we know now in the in the way that you know her brother her sister that her mum and dad that they, they're just this amazing wonderful family which they've which who you know have embraced William and he feels 
that they are his family too that they, they he's got this extended family and obviously now Catherine has got the extended family within the royal family um and i think again that shows the contrast of the difference between what family means to these two in comparison to what family means to um harry and Meghan. A absolute polar polar opposite and i do think that you can tell a lot by a person in how um you know their situation is with their family and how they respond it's not that you're a you're a bad person if you're you've fallen out with family but it's how you respond to that falling out are you somebody that constantly goes around bad mouthing them constantly goes around uh, slating them in, in other ways or trying to get back at them or and and this is exactly what harry and Meghan do whereas look at the way william and catherine have behaved in the in now we see what's happened all these years later and the way they have dealt with Harry and Meghan this dignified silence they're not they're not playing their game they're not you know so I imagine the hurt that they must have felt not only just in the fact that they welcomed Meghan and Meghan's mother but the fact that to be stabbed in the back by though by them but then not only that to have harry do what he's done so i can imagine for them it must have been very very hard and then to take that dignified silence um again polar opposite to the to the way that harry and Meghan have treated family um people are bound to ask you know it's a bit of an obvious question but children do you want lots of children is you know see what comes what's your I think we'll take it one step at a time. We'll sort of get over the marriage thing first and then maybe look at the kids. But <laughs> See, I love that. I mean, obviously, as we now know, they have got three beautiful children um, who are an absolute credit to them. Um, but I love the fact that still they're very coy. They're kind of like, well, let's just, you know, let's just get the marriage thing kind of done first before we... And they want to do it in the right way. You know, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but again, it's, you know, different to um, the way Harry and Meghan respond. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we, uh, we want a family, so, um, you know, we'll have to start thinking about that. Going back, going back to the start, because I, I think people, as I say, will be very curious ab about the totality of your relationship. When did you first set eyes on each other and what did you think? Well, it's a long time ago now, Tom. I'm trying to <laughs> rack my brain about it all. But uh, we were obviously, we met at university at St Andrews and uh, we were friends for over a year first. Um, and it just sort of blossomed from then on. Um, we just spent more time with each other and had a, a good giggle, had lots of fun and realised we shared the same interests and just, you know, had a really good time. She's got a really nice sense of humour, which kind of helps me because I've got a very dead sense of humour. Uh, so, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> a little bit of an insight there with these two. It's like she's got a na naughty sense of humour and he said, I've got a dirty sense of humour. Um, a side that we don't always see with these two. Um, but again, I, I kind of believe that because of the little, like I say, the little knowing glances they give each other, the little, just the little touches. Um, yeah, I'd say things are not too shabby, probably in the in the bedroom department there with these two, I would say. So it was good fun. We had a, we had a really good laugh and then things happened. And Kate, what did you think of William I mean he's clearly not quite the same as meeting your average you know <laughs> university student. maybe it was I don't know but uh, w w what was your first impression well I actually I think when when you said I actually went bright red when I met you and sort of scuttled off feeling very shy about about meeting you but um and actually you, William wasn't there for for quite a bit of, of the time initially he wasn't there for Freshers Week and um, so it did take a bit of time for us to get to know each other um, but we did become you know very close friends from from quite early on and i love the fact that they became friends first i'm i i am somebody i'm not saying that there are not relationships that um that are not formed without the friendship there first but there is something i feel very wonderful and solid about building that friendship foundation first and building that respect and then it blossoms into a relationship which is what i feel has happened here um, you know, they met so young at uni and they become friends and they, you know, they had a laugh with each other and they, 
they've suddenly fast realized that they do really like each other. William, obviously, as we know, had a little bit of cold feet at certain occasions, which is understandable. And I actually think that's quite healthy um, to, you know, to kind of, you know, they did break up. And I know that we've compared that to, again, the fact that obviously Harry and um, Meghan broke up. However, again, they were dating for some time. They met when they were young. So it's understandable that, you know, William might have that little bit of uncertainty. You know, does he want to play the field a bit more before he settles down and gets serious? Whereas Harry was a lot older. Um, and I think that obviously the way that Harry and Meghan met in the circumstances is, again, just very different from these two young starry-eyed kind of lovers you know when they're younger at uni meeting it's just it's just a lovely to me it's just such a wonderful little love story there's a story that goes around that uh, you had a picture of him on your <laughs> wall as a, was, as a there child wasn't just one that was like 10, <laughs> yeah. 20. he wishes no um no i had the levi's Levi's guy on my wall, not, not a picture of William, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was me and Levi's, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I love that. So she's not, you know, she's not pandering to him. She's not like, yeah, no, I had a picture of him. It was like, no, I had the Levi's guy. And William's just like, okay, no worries. <laughs> <That's honestly. laughs> They're just so, so you cute. Lived, you ended up... So you lived, you ended up sort of in the same flat. Was that if you don't mind me asking, before you were going out, or...? We, no, we, we moved in together as friends, and then because we were living together, we lived with other, a couple of others as well, um, and it just sort of, it sort of blossomed from there, really. We just saw more of each other, and, you know, hung out a bit more and, and did stuff, so, um, yeah. You like my cooking? Well, your cooking was all right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got better. Does William ever cook, or indeed do anything useful around the world? <laughs> to find useful, Tom. <laughs> Let's not go there. Yeah. No, he, he does actually. He did cook for me quite a bit at university, and it would always come with a bit of angst and a bit of anger if something had gone wrong, and I'd have to um, wander in and save, save something that was g going. So being honest, is that a skill that's declining over time or improving? I, I would say I'm getting better at cooking. Um, Kate would say I'm getting a lot worse. I didn't give you enough chance to practice. Though, maybe, so. No, that is true. I get quite uh, quite lazy about cooking because you know when I come back from work and stuff, it's the last thing I want to do really is spend loads of time cooking. But when I was um, trying to impress Kate. But this is what I mean. This, we in this interview, we we have got such an insight into how they are as a couple and how the little things that they sort of developed, the fact that, you know, he's admitting to burning things in the kitchen and, and she's having to come in and save the day and, uh, you know, and he's not afraid to say things like that. We we didn't have that with Meghan and Harry. Um, it was very um, vague. Yes, we we camped under the stars, stars in Botswana. There was nothing really about what they did, how they connected, apart from the roast chicken, um, which we now probably know is an urban in the Urban Dictionary for something else. Um, but just, we didn't really get that with Harry and Meghan. We didn't really get that sort of, I don't know, that just that closeness, that just something that created us to warm to them. Just something, you know, I know a lot of people were saying after that just there's just something about her, um, something about this seems off. I don't get that with, with William and Catherine. And okay, yes, I know that we know a lot more now, but even looking at this now, I can see it. I can see the love they have for each other, the respect, the banter. Um, it's, it's real. It's real. And you can see that realness here. Um, I was trying to cook these amazing fancy dinners and all that would happen was I'd burn something, something would overspill, something would catch on fire and she'd be sitting in the background just trying to help and basically taking control of the whole situation. So I was quite glad she was there at the time. Slightly awkward for the other flatmates or okay? Uh, no, to be honest, they were, they were perfectly happy with it. They were used to it, watching me sort of catching things fire and, you know, they, were, they, they found it very amusing. But I mean having the two of you going out in the flat or did they just not bat an eyelid? Um, I think at first they were they were sort of a bit surprised that it was what happened, and uh, then they realised it was it was really nice and it was good fun, and and we got on really well. They were good friends of ours as well, and so we we had a good we had a good giggle with them as well. Now I suppose a lot of people are going to wonder the first meeting with the families again, not necessarily your average meeting. Kate, what was your first impression of the family? Well, I was I was quite nervous about meeting 
uh, William's father, but um, but no, he's very very welcoming and you know very friendly. So yeah, I couldn't have it couldn't have gone easier really for me. But um, but and meeting the grandmother, the Queen, not again like your average meeting with the grandmother. Was that you know nervous about that too? Or? Well, I I first met her at um, Peter and Autumn's wedding. Um, and again, it was in amongst a lot of other guests, and um, she was very friendly. And no, it was, it was, yeah, it was fine. She's very welcoming. She knew yeah. it was, um, it was a, you know, it was a big day, and everything was going on. Peter and Autumn were there, and things. And she's, uh, she wanted to meet Kate and uh, for a while. So it was very nice of her to come over and say hello, and we had a little chat, and it got on really well. You're clearly tremendously fond of each other's families, and I'm guessing that is a big, going to be a, well, obviously, transparently, it's going to be a big part of your life going forward both your lives. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, as you know, Kate's, Kate's family, she's got a very, very close family, um, and I get on really well with them, and I'm very lucky that they've been so supportive. Uh, Mike and Carol have, have only been, you know, really sort of loving and caring and really fun, um, and have been really welcoming towards me, so I felt really part of the family, uh, and I hope Kate's felt the same with my family. Again, look at that. Look at the way he speaks about um, Catherine's family. Um, it's not just like, Doria is amazing, a big cheesy grin. Um, you know, he talks about the family and how he feels part of the family. Um, and obviously, and I, and I love the fact that, you know, Catherine, she doesn't give too much away. You know, she talks about William's family, but, but at the same time, she's very respectful and doesn't go over the top. And, um, but she just sort of says, you know, yes, they're very welcoming and actually meeting, you know, obviously now King Charles um, was just very lovely. And actually he's very friendly and got on very, and they got on very well. Um, so I think, yeah, just again, just such such a difference. People are bound to ask, you leave university, you've been going out a bit and you split up, famously, all over the papers. Catherine looks down there and, and I imagine it's like her face slightly changes here and um, I would imagine for her this was such an unpleasant time, um, which this is why I was really quite angry at when Megan brought up that her going through the, what she had written on the bus, and I'm not even going to say it, um, wasn't as bad, wasn't as bad as what apparently she went through. Um, let's be clear here. It's only as bad as what it feels for the person. You cannot say to somebody else what you're experiencing is not as bad as what I'm experiencing because it is subjective to the individual. It doesn't matter whether the experience in your eyes seems that yours is, is a bigger experience because of what she's allegedly saying she's gone through, but to diminish what Catherine went through, which I imagine was just awful. You don't know what that feels like because you're not the person, none of us do. We can only go by how we feel. And I, and I have this a lot, even with clients when they say, you know, if they've gone through something, oh, but it's not as bad as what I imagine other people go through. We have to stop that because as much as you can pull yourself out of something and you can decide whether or not you're going to carry on letting that experience um, affect you, of course. But I think it's really important not to allow somebody else to create you to feel that what you're going through isn't bad or isn't hurtful or isn't affecting you. Um, and so that, that's what angered me really a lot. Well, I mean, there was a lot that angered me in regards to that, but that was one of the things I thought, how dare you diminish what she went through, hounded by the press, you know, a breakup so public um, that it was sprawled all over, you know, the buses in London and, and just humi the humiliation, I imagine must've been devastating for her, especially because she comes across as such a soft, sensitive soul. Um, so I imagine this must have been really horrendous for her. I mean, thankfully, she obviously had her family as that support. But, you know, you can see, you know, it's uh, and, you know, and the, the footage at the time was horrendous. So, you know, that's one thing I will say to any of you. Don't don't let somebody diminish your experience. You know, if you feel hurt, don't allow somebody else to kind of go. Yeah, but my hurts more than yours.
no, it, it, it's maybe you feel that way, but it doesn't mean that it is. You know, it, everyone's hurt is subjective to who they are and, and you're allowed to have those feelings. What was all that about? I mean, people are bound to want to know. Well, I think, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I wouldn't read every, I wouldn't believe everything you read in the paper. But, uh, you know, in that particular instance, um, we did we did split up for a bit. But that was just, you know, we were both very young. It was at university and we were we were sort of both finding ourselves as such and being you know different characters and stuff it was very much trying to find our own way and uh, and we were growing up and so it was just sort of you know a bit of space and a bit of things like that and it soon worked out for the better exactly exactly and a lot of people will potentially do that um and i love the, his response to that you know like don't necessarily read it you know believe everything you read in the paper um but uh, you know but i love you know his response in that you know we were growing up um, you know, these things happen. We were trying to find ourselves within being, you know, separate on our own. Um, you know, you're thrown into this whirlwind that's the public eye. It's, it probably is a lot to take on. You know, you're, you're juggling uni as well. You're young. Um, so I, I think that's very understandable. But you can see by the way he looks at her. Um, you, you can just you can see the love there. You can see it. And I think I, I, at the time, wasn't very happy about it, but actually it made me a stronger person. You find out things about yourself that maybe you hadn't realised, or I think you can get quite consumed by a relationship when you're younger. And you know, I, I really, I really valued that time for me as well, although I didn't think it at the time. Looking back on it, I as a know, chance I think, to recenter yourself. Yeah, is that definitely. You? Yeah. And again, what a healthy attitude to have you know, recognising that, okay, back then when it happened, it was traumatic and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that, that she liked, of course, nobody does. But I think the fact that she's grown a lot and she looks looks back on this and she's actually grateful for the time to, you know, where she could find herself. And actually she said it made her stronger. That's the difference. That's what you do. That's how you show that growth and change is because you don't let something like that define you. You let it make you stronger and you work through things. Um, to come out a healthier version. This is all bad. Sorry with that one. Did you kind of always have at the back of your minds that you wanted to marry each other? Did that come slowly? Did you suddenly <laughs> decide a couple of weeks ago? I mean, people have assumed you're going to be married for a long time. How did you both come to it in your head? Well, from my point of view, I, you know, when I first met Kate, I knew there was something very special about him, and that I knew that there was there was possibly something that I wanted to explore there. Uh, but we ended up being friends for a while and, and that just sort of was a good sort of foundation because um, I do genuinely believe now especially that um, you know being friends w with you know one another is a massive uh, advantage um, and it just went from there and over the years um, I knew things were getting better and better and uh, we went through a few stumbling blocks as every, every relationship does uh, but we we picked ourselves up and carried on and, and we you know from where you had you know the odd problem when you were first getting to know each other those have all gone and it's just really easy with being with each other and it's really fun and uh, um, I'm obviously extremely funny and she loves that so um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really good. <laughs> I, love, I Honestly I just love the fact that he's like he's bringing this little bit of humour into this and he's a bit cheeky. Um, I, I, I just I, I adore them I just do I think and you can tell I mean, obviously, it's testament in the look at how long they've been together now with three beautiful children. And I would absolutely agree with what he's saying. You know, the fact that they took that time that they yes, they had those little stumbling blocks, but they actually work through them. Um, and it's creating them to be a lot more solid, a lot more stronger. But they like each other. They respect each other. And I think that goes a long way when you're in a relationship with somebody. If you like and respect the person you're actually in a relationship with. Um, and you can tell with these two that they absolutely do. Um, out of the two, I possibly in this interview, I would say he he's definitely bowled over by her. And actually, even some of the things that I see now, um, he, they still have, like I say, those little looks like he will still look at her when she's just there. And, and, and it, you just see the love and respect that he has. But in turn, you see that with her as well. Um, I think in this interview, he's he's a lot more sort of, I feel, bowled over. Like he's very, I think he really does find a very, I mean, who wouldn't, very attractive. And he probably thinks, you know, I'm the luckiest man alive. And in my opinion, he probably is. But then 
he's a lovely, wonderful person too. So she probably feels the same. And I just think that the fact that they have this amazing friendship, um, I just think is why it works with them. Okay. You say so yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are, you know, you're obviously upset when you, you split up, but all your friends, uh, both of your friends talk about, you know, this is, there's a very substantial love that's built up over a very long period of time. You know, that's part friendship and obviously more than that. Well, I think if you, when you go out with someone for quite a long time, <laughs> you do get to know each other very, very well. You go, th you go through the good times, you go through the bad times, you know, both, both personally but also within a relationship as well. And, you know, I think if you can come out of that stronger and, um, you know, learn, as I said, things about yourself, um, you know, it's certainly, it's certainly, um, yeah, been a good, a good for how many years? <laughs> Uh, I lost count. He did oh, take his time. Three, it, must be, it must be said. Did you ever want him to come on? <laughs> well, no. We did. We've we've had our we've had our conversations, but I think you know it was. Um, we've know, talked it about it today well, yeah. for a while, haven't we? We've yeah. talked about this happening for a day. So Kate wasn't in the in the dark over it all. Mm. We've been planning it for you know for at least a year and if not longer. Um, it was just finding the right time, and that was what, you know, as most people, people say with couples, it's all about timing. And I had my, you know, my military career, and I really wanted to concentrate on my flying, and I couldn't have done this if I was still doing my training. Right, so that's going back to kind of what I said in the beginning, where I said that I think that she had an inkling. Um, I think that they have had these co this, this sort of conversations in regards to getting engaged or the next steps, etc. So I think she probably knew that something was going to be happening. But what I'm guessing is she didn't expect it to be when it was. So that was where the little surprise was, where she wasn't quite expecting it. But there was something where they have been sort of talking and planning. So I think she probably knew it might be happening, but not quite. So that's why I picked up on... The fact that even though she said it was they, they're sort of saying it was a surprise, it kind of was, but it wasn't, if that makes sense. So I've got that out of the way and Kate's, you know, in a good place with, in terms of work and where she wants to be and stuff. And we just both decided now was a really good time. You're obviously going to enter this family, the most famous, you know, royal family in, in, in the world. Um, William's mother was this massive, iconic figure, the most famous figure of our age. Is that worrying? Is that... Is that intimidating? Does that does that do you think about that a lot, both of you? You particularly, Kate, obviously. Well, obviously, it'd be. Um, I would love to have met her. Just quickly, before, William's self-soothing picks up there. He's rubbing his hands quite a lot more, and then she's licking her lips. So I would say that there is definitely something. And I just interesting that I paused it right at a moment where it looks like William's actually looking at Catherine's chest. <laughs> does look like that I've paused that right at the worst moment but I think this is probably big shoes what she feels you know this is quite a lot of pressure I would imagine but at the same time I don't think she meets she would want mean that in a disrespectful way I think it's because Diana was just such a very big character very loved um it's you know it's a big thing um and and she's obviously she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to to look up to, um, obviously on the to this day and you know going forward and things, you know it is, you know it's a wonderful family. The, the members who I've who I've met have achieved a lot, and you know very inspirational. So um, yeah, I do. There's no pressure though, because there's no pressure because like um, Kate said, you know it's about carving your own future. Um, no one's going to try and, you know, no one's trying to fill my mother's shoes and, and she, what she did is fantastic. And there you go. And that's, that's the wonderful thing. Um, and again, the difference, you know, William, you know, just sort of jumps in there because I think he can sense that sort of Catherine's sort of stumbling a little bit in, in the response. Um, and so he's, and, and like he said, there's absolutely no pressure because this is about, in a sense, Catherine carving her own um, role within the, the royal family not trying to be Diana and the irony being is obviously now as we know that I feel that Catherine is now in a, in a way the princess of the people um, I think she she is going to be the most phenomenal queen um, and she has touched the hearts of so many that kindness she doesn't have to reinvent herself she doesn't have to do anything she just is who she is and it, it exudes and that's why people love her you know people 
there's people light up when they're around William and, and Catherine. You don't have that with with Harry and Meghan. Um, and I, I just love the fact that he's saying the same thing. You know, she was, you know, Diana was his mother and she was amazing. But Catherine is her own person and she doesn't have to try to be his mother, unlike somebody else that we know. Um, it's about making your own future and your own destiny. And, and Kate will do, um, will do a very good job of that. This is a life, you know, in the public domain to a degree that you can't escape. You, you both know that. You're obviously very, you know, you know it better than Kate does. You're obviously yeah. very protective of her. Massively so. Of course, uh, you know, her and her family, I really want to make sure that they, they have the best um, sort of guidance and at your chance front to door. see what life's been like or what life is like in the family. And that's kind of almost why I have been waiting this long, is I wanted to give her a chance to see and to back out if she needed to um, <laughs> before it all got too much because, you know, it's, I'm trying to learn from lessons done in the past and I just wanted to give her the best chance to, to settle in and, and see what, you know, what happens the other side. And I'm, I'm also glad that I've, I've had the time to sort of to grow and understand myself more as well. So hopefully. And again, the difference. This is why William waited for as long as he did, because he wanted to make sure that she knew what this role would entail, that she knew how much of a big thing this was marrying into the royal family and not only for Catherine but also for her family you know he wants to protect them he wants them to make sure that they they know what's involved and so he wanted to give her time and them time and in case she felt that it wasn't it was too much for her and again look at the difference between that and Harry and Meghan who literally had this whirlwind romance as, as they put it and then got engaged and then literally got married and then minutes later, we're like, we don't want to do this anymore. Albeit that I've, I've said before that I think they were kicked out. I don't believe. Well, I, from what I'm gathering is, I think that they were, she was asked to leave. And then Harry was kind of like, you've got to, you know, you're either going to stay or you're going to go. Um, and I think that, again, shows the maturity of William in, you know, in contrast to Harry. Harry, who was eager to, or Meghan was eager to, 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 you know, pin him down and was like, you know, let's get engaged, let's get married. But without actually her really understanding what, what it was like. And I think there possibly was an assumption by her that the royal family was just going to be all tinsel and tiaras, um, a bit like a Disney movie. And perhaps Harry thought, well, she's in the entertainment industry, so she knows about the media. So in a way, it was they probably felt that it was they could both navigate each other but they didn't give that time and respect because I think Harry was desperate to be um in a relationship with somebody and I think Megan was desperate to hook him so she could start utilizing the titles the money and all the stuff that comes with it does that mean I've done <laughs> hopefully well? good to a good job yes good so you, you know, there's been a conscious, I mean, part of the reason it's taken you this long is that you've both spent a long time contemplating the future, being calm about it, pondering it, thinking about it. Is that right? It is. Yeah, well, we've talked about it a lot, haven't we? So it's always been something we've had a good chat about. And, and you know, like we said, both of us have come to the decision, you know, pretty much together. I just chose, you know, when to do it and how to do it. And uh, obviously being a, a real romantic, I did it extremely well. <laughs> he does keep looking at her chest. I'm noticing that. Unless, unless he's looking at her microphone, maybe her microphone is slipping, but um, but I'm catching that. He does keep looking at her chest. Little sneaky glances. You know, like we said, both of us. Okay, okay just coming to the close, people have put, you know, placed some criticisms of you, you know, about, about your work and so on. Does, does that hurt? How do, you, how do you respond to people who say those things? Well, I think I, I know I've been working very hard for the family business. Um, sometimes those days are, are long days and, and you know, I, I think if I know I'm working hard and I'm, you know, pulling my weight, both work and then playing hard at the same time, you know, I, I think, you know, everyone who I work with, I think can see that I'm there pulling my weight and um, that's really what matters to me. Um, and, you know, your family, as you, you've said, you're very close. D does it hurt some of what's said or do you let it run, run off your, all your collective backs on the grounds that that's just what you have to live with? Well, 
again, I think if you, the people around home are very supportive to us and, you know, those are the people that really matter to us, our close friends and close family. And I think if sort of they feel that you're doing the right thing, you can only be sort of true to yourself and you sort of have to ignore a lot of what's said, obviously take it on board, but, um, you know, you have to be yourself, really, and that's how I've stuck by it, really. And I, again, I love that response. She's just so gentle in, and she's so careful in, in how she responds. And I, and, I, and I love that about her, both of them, actually. And I think she's absolutely right. It is very hard, you know, you, you know being a human being and having your, I'd imagine, having your whole life critiqued publicly and I do feel that you have to be quite a strong person to not take that on um, and I think the fact that they they have that great support within both families um, she's got obviously the fact that William has gone through this um, and obviously at this point she was close to Harry Harry would be there he, you know he's gone through it obviously the, the other family members have gone through it and so they would be able to give her that guidance of how to navigate this and and imagine that a lot of they, they would probably protect her from a lot of it and the family and I think the fact that they have that and like she said as long as the people around you know who you are as long as you know who you are the rest of it is just noise it really is and as much as sometimes yes it can be hard but I think she just has such a healthy healthy outlook on on the way this is and that's why I think they've been able to you know because obviously I'm sure that they would never believe for one second that what was going to happen was going to happen but I think that conversation here has held them in such great stead because they they have gone through so much since Megan has come on the scene because let's be honest there wasn't this vitriol there was the odd little thing that happened and obviously when Diana passed there was you know the late queen was critiqued a bit about that but they got through it and it passed you know obviously King Charles as then Prince Charles was was critiqued a lot but they got through it but I still don't feel it was anywhere near as bad as what has happened since we've had social media um because obviously most things were just in the newspapers that we we didn't have any online social media now it's everywhere so the fact that they've had to then go through all of this vitriol that has been thrown at them the racism and everything else i think just shows you how strong they are as a family as both families and as each other as well they're strong within themselves it's a massive thing you're going into now you know i mean obviously <laughs> marriage is a big thing for everyone but it's you know in such a public way Excited? A little bit terrified? Massively excited. Quite happy when the interview's over. <laughs> but no, we're, we're hugely excited and uh, it's, you know, we're looking forward to spending the rest of our times, you know, the rest of our lives together um, and uh, seeing what the future holds. And Kate, for you, do you you've, you've had a long time to sort of contemplate this moment. Do you... Let's not, let's not over egg the long bit. <laughs> <bit off. laughs> no, it, it is, it's obviously nerve-wracking because I, do, I don't know what I'm... Um, um, sort of I don't know the ropes really William was obviously used to it but um but no I'm I'm willing to learn quickly and and work hard now should do really well yeah we'll do very well. a lot of opportunities obviously for within the family you know this huge ability to change people's lives for the better I, I guess that's something you must have contemplated as well yes well I really hope I can I can make a difference you know even in the, in the smallest way um yeah I, I'm, I'm looking forward to to helping as much as I can well, thank you very much for talking to us. You look, as I said at the start, very relaxed, very happy. Good luck. Thank you. And there you have it. And I will say, I'm not a fan of that Tom Bradbury. Um, I felt that he was a little bit more intrusive uh, with this interview, um, with this interview than actually I felt that when he interviewed um, Harry, he was the one that interviewed Harry, wasn't he? One of the other, yeah, he was. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I just felt there was some almost like little digs there and I could even feel that towards the end, uh, William was getting a bit irritated. Um, and I could kind of sense that. Um, but I think overall, like I say, what a massive difference this interview was. Um, 
and I think they handled it remarkably well given how I think Tom was kind of prodding a little bit um and and to me what more is there to say with this couple they they just I mean the body language you, you know to me anything that would would come up I would just deem as in a sense normal behavior in regards to the fact that they're young they've gone through a lot you know Catherine is quite a shy person so it's you know something that she's sort of out of her comfort zone I think William is not also somebody even though he's used to speaking it's you know I don't think he particularly likes speaking about things that are really personal to him he's quite private um and I think again that's the difference so anything that I say would come up in regards to their body language, like anxiety, actually I would deem that as in a sense normal given how they are. Whereas when you look at, like I say, Harry and Meghan, you look at the, the contrast, you look at the way they are in general. And I do think Harry's quite an attention seeker. He was, he's was he been like that ever since he was little, likes to be centre of attention. He's always been like that. Whereas William has always been quite shy and reserved. Um, and I think that hasn't changed as he's grown up. So then, so when he's starting to get a bit of anxiety, I feel that that is part of that. There's just things he's uncomfortable about. There's something that he doesn't want people to know. It doesn't quite align with his personality. The same with Megan. She's very out there, very extrovert. Again, wants the attention, loves the attention. So when you're looking at being a little bit uncomfortable, you've got to kind of ask, well, why? Why are you uncomfortable? What's that about? Um, so again, just completely polar opposite. And, and like I say, this is a palette cleanse because I, I love them. You know, what is there, in my opinion, not to love with these two? Um, and they're just, they're stunning, wonderful family. Um, you couldn't, you know, if you're going to have relationship goals, I think these two are it. Um, I'm sure that, that they're not perfect, but then no family is. But I love the way that they... They seem to just bounce off each other and um, and it is just, yeah, it's wonderful to see. So, um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I hope that that has kind of set you up for the weekend. Happy place before I start delving into the other uh, videos that I'm going to do in regards to those two. Um, may have to break it up, may have to find a couple of others of, um, of, of William and Catherine and just do a collage of of a uh, palette cleanse every now and again um of the other royals but yeah so let me know what you think in the comments give this video a like if you enjoyed it is there anything you feel that i've missed out on is there anything you want to add to this um, i'd love to read your comments what do you think um you know do you have the same thoughts as me or do you have something different that you think um as always please keep it respectful because there is no need to be disrespectful in the comments i won't tolerate that and i will remove the comment if you are uh, attacking to somebody else or bullying to somebody else because i don't want that here um but for the most part pretty much all of you are wonderful so i know i don't really need to say it but you know i do uh, so yeah, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can. The link is in the description box below. Um, it's also above the subscribe button. You can become a member. Your name will go up on the member board. Um, your, you can also be part of the member question, um, which will be starting next week. Um, giving people a chance to, it's up on the community page. If you want to add your question in there, it's for members only. Um, and so once a week I will be picking a question and I will be answering that question. I haven't done it today because this video is going to be a, just over an hour long. So I haven't done it today, but I will be starting that next week. Um, so everything you need to know is in the description box of every single video, my PO box, my bubble merchandise. If you haven't gone across and supported my tea and therapy channel, please can I ask you to go and do that. Um, it is getting up and running, but it still needs your support. Also, my son's channel, trying to get him his first 4,000 views on his channel. Um, so if you could go across and watch a couple of his videos, even if you want to stick it on mute, that would be really, really helpful. Um, even if you do that rather than watch mine, I would appreciate that. Um, and yeah, anything else you need to know should be there. So thank you as always for your wonderful support um, and everything that you uh, you do to stick by me. Um, and I will see you next week in the next video. <sighs> Here we go again. Um, have a wonderful weekend, whatever you're doing, and I will see you next week. So as always, I love you, I appreciate you, but most of all, I respect you. Mwah. Bye.